These are the Xreal One Pros, and I've been using these for the last couple of weeks, and I've got to say, AR glasses have come a long, long way. I've been testing these in terms of productivity, and I've got to say, there are so many good things about these glasses, but there are a couple of little things that are really, really niggling at me, and I wanted to go through the good and the bad in this review. Welcome back to the Feel Productive channel. My name's Ez. Let's get into it. So the X-Real One Pros look like sunglasses, but actually they've got these tiny screens on each lens. So when you put them on, you're basically wearing a pair of screens on your face, which sounds insane, but that's what they are. They're fairly lightweight and comfortable, and they're augmented reality glasses, but really they're just kind of mirroring whatever you plug them into. You plug them in via USB-C into pretty much almost any kind of device, a computer, a tablet, a phone, even a games console. And then whatever you've plugged them into, you basically see a mirroring of that screen in front of you floating in front of your face. They also play back high quality audio via these Bose speakers, which actually aren't as bad as they appear. So the X-Real One Pro have the largest field of view for AR smart glasses. So now you get a 57 degree field of view, whereas the generation before this, the X-Real Ones, had a 50 degree field of view. And it does make a difference. The 57 degree field of view translates into a 171 inch display in front of you, which is a crazy amount that probably nobody needs. But actually imagine having that kind of power and that kind of portability inside glasses when you're out and about on a train in a cafe or wherever you are, you can basically multitask to your heart's content. So the real magic behind these glasses is the X1 chip that's built into these, which allows for spatial computing without any additional peripherals. So everything happens in the glasses themselves. And that is an absolute game changer. We're talking a three millisecond motion to photon latency, which is basically the glasses detecting how quickly you are moving. So you can basically shake your head and the screen will follow you. Almost in real time, you pretty much don't see the lag. Now to put that into context, the Apple Vision Pro has a 12 millisecond motion to photon latency. So these things are super impressive. And the incredibly low latency free DOF experience basically results in you being able to use these in four different ways. The first is in anchor mode. So basically you can anchor what you're seeing to the screen. The screen itself stays static in front of you. I really enjoy that view. And I think by default, that's the view that you're most likely to use, but you can also use follow mode which basically follows you around. So if you look left or look right, the screen also moves to be centered to wherever you're looking. That's also useful, I guess, in different scenarios. Maybe when you're on the move, perhaps you're walking around or you're on the train or something like that. Then there's ultra wide mode, which is basically the 171 inch monitor where you look left and look right. And you've got this entire like curved screen in front of you, which is really, really immersive and maybe the most impressive experience you can get with these. And then there's side view, which basically allows you to have a very small screen up in the corner and have the rest of your screen transparent. Now to cycle through each mode, you simply press down the red button on the underside of the right temple of the glasses. And if you hold that button down, it will recenter the screen to whichever direction you're looking at in case your screen's gone off axis. Next to that button is a much bigger button which adjusts the brightness. So you can cycle through the brightness up and down, but you can also hold that button down to get three different brightness modes. You have pitch black mode, which as the name suggests, turns the lenses pitch black and you can't see anything other than the screen that you're supposed to be looking at. Then you have tinted mode, which basically half tints the screen so you can kind of see what's behind. And then you've got clear mode, which basically just allows you to just see through the glasses as normal glasses. Then you can very easily cycle through those three modes using the button next to the red button on the right hand temple. Incidentally, the clear mode, which is like the true AR mode, does still allow you to see the screen in front of you, but it's at like five or 10% opacity. So you can still have all of the advantages of walking around your house or your room and doing stuff. But do these actually help with your productivity? When it comes to real world use, why would you buy a pair of these glasses? Well, I'd say the standout feature is the ultra wide view, which gives you that 171 inch display and it emulates having a multi-monitor setup. So if your desk setup has two or three monitors on it, then 
For a tiny, tiny footprint, you pretty much get the same experience. But overall, I'd say if your workflow doesn't really need to have multiple apps open, then I just find having loads of windows in front of you isn't conducive to productivity. So I'd say it really just depends. These are obviously best for things like gaming and media consumption and stuff like that, particularly with the 120 hertz refresh rate. You can hook these up to your games console, your Steam Deck. I actually did try these on the Nintendo Switch 2 and it didn't work, even with the x -Real One adapter to charge it at the same time. But watching movies and YouTube videos, which I, I do a lot, I watch a lot of YouTube videos, I found that this is a, a really nice experience. It's definitely kind of brings it all to life and it makes you feel like, oh, okay, I can see see the magic of this now like this isn't just reflecting my computer screen you really do feel like you're transported to a different place I've actually used these for video calls as well which yes you do kind of look like a bit of a weirdo to your colleagues who are just watching you on the camera not really looking at them so you kind of lose the eye contact element of video conferencing it can be useful but it also kind of takes away the point of video conferencing I would say there are built-in microphones on this thing as well by the way so if you wanted to use Use the microphones you could. I personally have found these most useful when doing photo editing and doing stuff in Canva, even creating the thumbnail for this very video I did using these and I just found the whole experience a little bit quicker because I could very quickly jump from one app to the other. I did find that with text-based workflows like when I was writing scripts in Notion I found that I was squinting a little bit I found that they are 1080p screens but they weren't necessarily as clear by the way if you're enjoying this video please do hit the like button and subscribe for more tech and productivity content I know you want to so let's talk about comfort and ergonomics and in terms of eye fatigue and eye comfort these are made of the latest generation half inch Sony micro OLED displays, which are 1080p each, as I mentioned before, and they provide good color accuracy, great for professional work, great brightness and contrast improvements, particularly on the previous generation. And they are 40% slimmer than previous designs of AR glasses. So you can also get these lenses, which are 11 millimeters thick in prescription as well. So if you're someone who wears glasses regularly, then you can also get that implemented here. But is the 1080p resolution per eye enough? I'll come to that in a minute. The weight distribution is really, really good on these. I wear a normal pair of glasses normally day to day. And actually these are about the same sort of weight as those. You can also adjust the IPD distance in these glasses as well. So basically the measurement between your two pupils. There are nose pad options as well in the box. So if the default nose pads are maybe a bit too tight for you, you can change those up as well. Okay, so let's talk about some of the drawbacks because so far I've been really complimentary and I really do love this device. But as I said at the beginning of this video, there are some niggles and some things that might be game changing for you. The first is this USB-C cable, which basically makes me feel tethered to the device that I've connected it to. So for example, when I connect it to my MacBook at my desk, I pretty much just have to take these glasses off every time and it totally breaks the whole kind of point of having these and feeling like you're constantly in some other kind of reality. The other issue is just the form factor of the glasses themselves. This isn't specific to the X-Real One Pros, but the fact there's like a whole bunch of light bleed coming in from the sides and from the top. But if you wanna buy these to, to have that fully immersive experience, this is definitely not gonna do it for you. And it's weird because these feel really, really cutting edge. And at the same time, sometimes they feel like these really tacky, cinema 3D glasses that you get. And maybe the next generation of these are gonna have 4K displays that are even better. And maybe there will be like ways of being able to block out the light on the sides and maybe they'll be even more comfortable and maybe they won't get as warm. They also get really, really warm around your like your nose and like this area here. Maybe the biggest issue I have with it, aside from all of the things I've just mentioned, are the 1080p screens on each eye because when it comes to looking at text, even just viewing general stuff, YouTube videos, whatever it might be, there is still some kind of blur, some kind of like weird, like phasing effects. Therefore, it just doesn't quite feel like a $600 product. But at $600, I'd expect 
a really crystal clear experience or I pretty much expect a headset. And when the Apple Vision Pro next generation comes out and they're looking to make a cheaper version of it, let's say they position it at like the thousand dollar mark, if they do, then there's no way you could justify paying $600 for these. I'd still say these are useful for power users, for people who want that maximum real estate. If you're on the go a lot, you're a remote worker, you're someone that doesn't want to be tied to your desk all the time, these will also be really useful. Content creators and video editors will also find this useful just because like, why not have a giant jumbo version of Final Cut Pro right up against your face? If you're a gamer, there is like almost no question these things almost primarily, I think, are the best fit for gaming. And if you have older AR glasses and you're used to just wearing AR glasses now, which probably is a really niche audience, but yes, you should probably upgrade to these as well because these are pretty much as good as they get. But what do you think? Do you think these are worth it at $600? Let me know in the comments below. I definitely will be testing these more, so do stay subscribed if you wanna see more AR glasses related content. And if you wanna see some more cool tech that helps boost my productivity, I'll leave a link to that video at the end of this one. I'll see you there.